Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us here today. And uh, I'd like to first just thank uh, First Church here in Palmerton for being so flexible in allowing us to use their meeting house today when Mother Nature decided after many months of glorious weather to uh, bring us back to uh, April temperatures. But thank you for joining us here. Um, this is, if this is your first time, we're glad you're here. Please come back. Usually we're out on the lawn here, picnicking beforehand. But we're thrilled to be uh, here to present this program. I'd like to also extend a voice of thanks to, to today's concert sponsor, um, which is World's Fargo Advisors, whose funding has supported um, today's performance. And if you look in our program book, um, we'd like to acknowledge all of our business sponsors and ads uh, who make the FESO seasons uh, possible each year. So today's program is a mixture of American and British music, and somewhere in the middle as well. We're going to start with two um, marches, one of which you'll probably recognize, that is The Thunderer by John Philip Sousa. And the second um, is The Presidential Polonaise, which was um, commissioned um, by um, Chester A. Arthur, the president, who did not care for um, Hail to the Chief. Um, and so he asked Sousa, could he write another march that was more dignified and stately fitting of the president's um, entrance? He also wanted something that Sousa could use to help move guests along during the reception when um, he and his wife were welcomed into the White House. And so Sousa ended up writing um, the presidential polonaise. But as soon as uh, Chester was out of the White House, um, Grover Cleveland went back to help the chief and it has stayed ever since, but they have been played the holidays. So please enjoy our first two marches, the Thunderer and uh, the Presidential Holidays by John Philip Sousa.
those that it was um, uh, John uh, uh, James Tyler, that president's wife, who didn't like his uh, husband was a bit short, and so people didn't know the president was angry, hence why they had uh, held to the chief, so that people knew that the president was coming into the room. It could be an old wives' tale, but that's uh, what many of my colleagues told me when I was. Uh, Preparing to become to take my citizenship test two years ago, of course, there's a hundred questions, but of course, uh, everyone wants to test you on other bits of knowledge about American uh, history. But uh, that was on the test. <laughs> so uh, now we're going to go on a bit of a journey uh, across the ocean and back and forth. So we'll stay with our friend John Philip Sousa uh, just briefly. We're going to play another one of these marches, uh, which is uh, Hands Across the Sea. Uh, which I say, which he wrote uh, at a time to encourage relationships between the various uh, nations on either side of the Atlantic uh, to cooperate and support one another. And I can't think of a time more appropriate than to play this.
century. Uh, something a little different still in our sort of March theme here, but um, a little bit more um, refined and a little bit more um, intimate of a march. That's the best way to describe it. There's a lovely um, cello and horn and uh, trombone theme that you'll hear uh, throughout this.
And now for something completely different. Um, we go to um, the River Thames and to Handel's Water Music. This is a three-part suite, um, originally uh, commissioned by uh, King George I um, to uh, provide music for a trip down the Thames River towards Chelsea. And so they loaded the King's entourage onto a barge and a, what they think is about a 60-70 piece orchestra onto another barge and um, with no rowers, they basically flowed in, floated down with the tide and um, the, the handle played uh, this um, uh, sweet part, this big part sweet for the king and he enjoyed it so much he asked to hear it again to the point where the orchestra played it from 8 o'clock at night until midnight so four hours of the same music <laughs> Um, but it has remained uh, very, very popular. Um, you'll hear it um, a lot, uh, both here in the States and in the UK. Extracts, sometimes the, uh, the whole uh, complete three-part work. But today we're just going to play for you um, one of the hornpipes, the other hornpipe, from the uh, second suite uh, of Handel's Water Music.
king and it poured with rain. So they weren't the most impressive, and of course everyone got very wet. And so for a long time, the Royal Fireworks Music had sort of that negative connotation that they uh, sort of brought on bad weather. But fortunately, um, history has been kind to uh, music for the Royal Fireworks and is now much beloved uh, Baroque uh, classic. Uh, we're going to go back to featuring our winds, brass, and percussion. We're going to play um, a series of um, sea songs um, compiled by um, Henry Wood. And um, Wood was um, uh, responsible for really what we call the modern day uh, proms uh, in the UK. And he arranged a lot of music at the time for this, um, one of which was these um, sea songs. Originally um, uh, for concert military band, um, and, sorry, for orchestra, today we'll do the uh, military band version. And every now and again, someone will insert a different sea song or shant into it and pull it out. Today is a collection of, sort of the highlights from that suite. You'll probably recognize a few of them uh, in the, and then at the end of the big, um, grandioso uh, hymn to the, uh, to the Navy at the end. <coughs>
sea legs, we're going to go to dry land. We're going to play uh, two marches by Elgar, uh, marches one and four from his Pomp and Circumstance marches. Uh, the first one, of course, features the tune Land of Hope and Glory. Um, but if you live on this side of the Atlantic, you might recognize it as the melody that is played at high school and college graduations, usually at quite a um, well, Dutch. <laughs> um, but uh, in the UK, this is still a mark, there's a bit more pep to it. Uh, the tune came first, and then the words came later after the coronation um, of King George, um, and uh, the melody was changed just a bit to uh, fit the words of Violent Hope and Glory, uh, Mother of the Free, which is a, a patriotic national um, anthem in the UK. Um, the uh, second march we'll play is number four. Um, this one is a bit uh, brighter, a little bit more uh, peppier than, say, the, uh, the first one. And it was recently played at, um, at the coronation um, a, a month ago, um, so at the King Charles. And so we nice to feature uh, one from a coronation a few years, a few decades earlier, and one uh, from the present day. Of course, they were written um, as their own separate piece uh, outside of any kind of royal connotation in their original uh, conception. But today we'll play one and four.
to summer concert series televised by the BBC. It takes place at Albert Hall's broadcast all over the country. Um, they play they play this on the very last night, um, and to hear 2,500 people screaming at the top of their lungs, land of hope and glory, right on their range. It's incredibly, incredibly powerful, um, and it's. Um, there's been a few discussions, should this be our national anthem? Um, but you know, it's nice to have a choice of different uh, songs to sing as a nation, just like the US had various songs, various uh, anthems and hymns um, to evoke those moments of, of great pride and unity. So we now play the, uh, the fourth movement, uh, the fourth uh, uh, march rather, from the Pomp and Circumstance Suite.
Sunday. The second is my bunny boy. And the third, which I won't forget, but I have my score here in front of me, um, is folk songs from Somerset. This features various uh, soloists. Um, you'll hear a clarinet solo, a Gwen um, on that. You'll hear some lovely string writing. You'll hear an oboe solo with Peter. Um, and this was originally written for military band, uh, but then um, it was arranged uh, by the composer and a colleague um, for orchestra as well. So today we play the orchestral version of uh, Bob Williams' English folk song, Sweet.
the founder of John Eels to um, end the program with um, Sousa's uh, Stars and Stripes Forever. And uh, for me, this is a very special anniversary today because 10 years ago today, I conducted this for the first time with this orchestra when I was chosen as their music director following John McGill's retirement and a year of search of, with guest conductors. And they asked me to come to this concert to, to introduce me to all of you and to uh, play uh, Stars and Stripes. And I remember Bob Abram saying to me, make, make sure you get it in the right key. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought he was joking, but I wasn't quite sure this could be still part of the interview process. <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled up EMS Music and asked them, and they said, I think you're being pranked. So, <laughs> so no, don't forget that point. <laughs> um, so it's special today that we close with this, and also to uh, mark 10 years, and next year will be my 10th full season with the orchestra. Um, and we're so glad you're joining us here today, and also to um, please stay tuned as our season is announced in the late summer um, for next year. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all uh, again here at the FDSO sort of concert. Once again, my name is Jonathan Colby, director here at Congress Valley Symphony. And thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon at our June uh, Pops concert. And um, I'd, like, I'd like to dedicate our final um, uh, piece here, Stars and Stripes, to all of the um, armed forces, those serving overseas, here at home, and all of our veterans as well, of um, wars. Thank you very much.
Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.